Today we're going to explore how to do subroutines in uh, inline assembly language in Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express. Um, these, uh, the way the subroutines are done is with the call and the return functions. Um, that, that allows you to, to create subroutines in, uh, in assembly language, which you can do, of course, in high-level language. And, of course, we can uh, reproduce anything high-level language can do. We can do that in assembly language as well. Um, also, we have the, uh, the push and the pop instructions. And uh, the push and the pop instructions used to manipulate the stack. Now, what the stack is is a last-in, first-out buffer. Uh, it's a simple data stru structure that's used to store values in memory. Um, this is, of course, used for the, uh, the sub our subroutine calls, as we'll see. And uh, you can do parameter passing using that using the push and the pop. And uh, the the way to think a good analogy for the stack is uh, basically a pile of books. As you you place a book on the stack, um, it's going to be the the book that you're going to take off the off of that pile. That stack is is going to be the last one that you placed on it. Thus, the last in, first out. Um, in order to get the book off the bottom of the stack, you need to uh, pop or take all the other books off of the top of that item uh, uh, you know, in order to access it. Uh, and what happens is in, in assembly language the uh, ESP or the extended stack pointer register is what's used to keep track of the stack. Uh, as items are pushed on the stack the ES ESP pointer is decremented uh, and as items are uh, popped off of the stack, the ESP pointer is incremented. So what, the ha what happens with the stack is that it, it starts high in memory and moves lower as it's filled, uh, filled with items, uh, as opposed to normal memory typically works low and then moves high. So the idea is there that the, the uh, two kind of... Uh, Normal memory would move up, filling up memory. A stack pointer moves down, uh, and at some point those two meet. When they meet, basically your computer's out of memory at that point. Uh, if you want to explore more about the stack pointer, if that analogy doesn't work for for you, Wikipedia talks about it a little bit and uh, explains it a little bit more. Um, so let's explore now the uh, example we have here. So we're going to execute this program. And uh, this first example is just a very simple subroutine. Uh, all we do is we're going to, it's, uh, the subroutine itself is sum, and all it does is add two numbers together. Uh, it expects the parameters to be passed uh, in the EAX and the EBX registers, and it just adds them together using a simple instruction. Again, this is kind of a, a, a meaningless uh, example, but it's, uh, it's short and sweet, very nice way to explain this. Uh, typically, a, the uh, subroutine would do something more complicated and more useful, something that you would uh, not be able to do with a single instruction. But uh, So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up for this call. So as I said, you've got to have the uh, parameter passed in the EAX register. We're going to put 5 in the EAX register. And as you can see, that happened, and uh, and put a three in the EBX register. EBX is now three, and uh, now we're going to call the sum. Now, note that you have to use the step into in order to uh, in order to see what happens inside that function. If you do step over, it's just gonna it's just gonna go from here, and you won't, it's just gonna go to the next instruction. You won't see it. So we're gonna step into that call, um, and uh, it's just going to add EAX and EBX. Now the uh, 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, which is now on the EAX register, and that's how we're going to pass that value back. So, uh, so the EAX register has that value, and uh, now we want to. Now we're just going to jump over that subroutine. You have to make sure that uh, if I had allowed that to um, just go to the next instruction and go through this uh, subroutine, it would hit this return and not having called it, there would have been uh, basically a random value on the stack 
and uh, that would have caused a problem, caused a memory memory access uh, issue because the uh, the program would have been jumping to some random location in memory, whatever happened to be on the stack at that moment. So you have to make sure that before you do a return, you've done a call. So for every call, there's a return, but the call has to be executed, of course, before the return. So we're going to jump down to the next example. In this case, uh, instead of passing parameters using the registers, which can be inconvenient, uh, we're going to push parameters on the stack instead. So we're going to do a we're going to do a push five and then a push three to to, to uh, pass a five and a three uh, into the subroutine. But first, I want to note here that the, uh, the ESP register is currently set to this value. So it ends in F8. So remember the fact that this, uh, well, it's actually 2, 3, F9, F8. Um, so note, note that the stack is of that value, but uh, now, so when we do a push, the push, as I said, a push is going to decrement the ESP register. So as I step into this, you'll note that the value of ESP is now F4, which is 4 less than the F8 up here. So what's happened now is we've pushed a 5 onto the ESP. So if I, this is a nice trick you can do in the address, you can actually do calculations in here. So if I say minus 4 from this value, it's going to subtract 4 from it. And uh, as you can see here, right on the top, right on uh, this address of the stack is the five. We go to the next item. It's going to push a three on there. We'll decrement. We'll change our address so you can see it. So now you've got uh, the the first item is here. It's the five, and the, and the, mo the most recent item is three. The stack pointer is pointing to this one. So this is the the last one in, if we wanted to pop it off, it would be the first one out. Again, thus last in, first out. Uh, now we're going to do a call to sum, and what the what a call does again is it's going to take it's going to take this add the address of sum, which happens uh, to be that value, and it's going to place it on. Let's see. So we got zero x zero zero eight four one. A1E. So that value is going to get placed on the uh, stack. And we'll, we'll step into that. And also, of course, it does a jump to that value as well. So now let's subtract 4 again from here. Because as we said, that value is placed on the stack. And uh, of course, keep in mind that that's actually backwards. So it's. Uh, so here's that. Here's the value that I mentioned. The, the address. Of sum is right there on the uh, on the stack zero zero. So it's right here zero zero eight four one a one c, and then also here's our three that we placed on the stack, and here's our five that we placed on the stack. Actually, it'd be a little easier to see that if I changed it to this. So here's so here's our uh, here's the address. Here's the three. Here's the five. Again, last in, first out, and of course. Uh, this the stack actually proceeds backwards in memory. So now, uh, now that the call has gotten us, uh, has jumped us to the uh, the sum, the sum two uh, subroutine. Uh, what I need to do, what we, want, what we need to do is uh, we we pass the values uh, onto the stack, and uh, now. The problem is, is we can't really pop these values off the stack because the last item that was placed on the stack is the address uh, the, that we need to return to when we're done uh, with the subroutine, which is what the return does. So we need to, another way to access these is to just take the stack pointer and we say, okay, uh, we have another item on the stack, so we want to go for before that. And since we're since stack operates in reverse, we add we add four because the address is 32 bits in this case. So we're going to go get the uh, that uh, value off the stack. So, uh, and uh, that value was 3, so EAX is now equal to 3. And now we're going to go get this value of 5. So we copied that into EBX. 
we add them together and uh, now we now we're done we're done with that we're doing our return uh, return value in the EAX register in this case and uh, we're going to do return now um, note again that since we pass these values in we want to take them off the stack when we're done and actually that's what this return value does the, re the return value now of course the, the last thing on the stack is the address so what the return does is going to it's going to pop the uh, return this address pop this off the stack first and it's going to return to that address which was you know one one after the call right here jump end and uh, but then we need to do again need to get get rid of those other two values that are on the stack the three and the five both 30 uh, 32-bit values in this case so that's what this eight is for this eight will we'll get rid of those those two values and it uh, adds uh, another eight bytes onto the stack. And uh, and uh, so the return has uh, jumped us to the, the item right after the call. And uh, our stack pointer, if you if you remember, actually if I, if I add 12 plus 12 to this value here, that's the original stack value 0023F9F8. F8. If you review re, uh, the tape, you'll see that that's what the original stack value was. And now the stack value has been returned to that original value 0023F9F8. F8.